All right. Good morning, everybody, and happy Thursday. Welcome to this week's edition of the Long Coffee Break. We really appreciate you joining us this morning. We're really excited to be joined by Clifford Milligan, who is the Area Vice President with KMC Controls. Clifford's been with KMC for two years, and before that, he's got more than 20 years of experience in the controls business on the contracting side. Really excited to have him with us today and really excited to share with you a new technology for measuring outdoor airflow. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Clifford. Thanks, Jason. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us this morning. I appreciate your time. And uh, again, my name is Clifford Milligan. I'm with KMC Controls. And today we're going to talk about some flow measurement and product that KMC has. Uh, my email is right here, but if you have any questions that you want to direct towards me, if you don't get a chance to get it down, uh, contact your, your uh, local uh, long representative and he'll make sure you get, your, get my information to you. But so a quick overview of KMC, many of you maybe have or have not heard of KMC controls, but KMC is a manufacturer at heart. It's what we do. We manufacture products uh, specifically for the HVAC industry uh, and the BAS industry is kind of where we focus, actuators, controllers. Uh, we make uh, products for a whole bunch of different people. We've been doing it for 50 years. Our factory is in Northern Indiana. So we're an American made company. Uh, and However, today we're really going to be focusing on our newest product, our uh, airflow measuring system, uh, which is a very unique approach to it. And uh, but wanted to kind of give a brief, quick introduction to KMC. So why do we measure outdoor airflow? So again, most of the people that uh, are talking and on this thing are understand why we do it. But just a quick overview of, of indoor air quality, the emphasis after COVID and everything happened, it kind of put a uh, a new emphasis on it, but it was already cold. It was already in many ASHRAE standards. Everybody designs around uh, minimum outside air requirements based on your space, but it prevents sick building syndrome, uh, changing your air in the space, and it's significant health benefits through you know any uh, any of the three-letter organizations in ASHRAE that you can think of. Uh, bringing in fresh air is the cornerstone of any kind of in indoor air quality plan you may have. And then increasing cognitive function. There's studies out there that, that, that we already are aware of that in, improving indoor air quality does that. And then ASHRAE uh, during COVID had released their position on infectious aerosol control and mitigations and, and, and standard 241 that just came out this summer, which was ASHRAE's uh, standard for infectious disease uh, control mitigation and, and different things like that. All that is the reason why we want to measure outdoor airflow that we're bringing into our facilities using our equipment. Um, and one of the other things that we do is, is bringing in outside air is very costly. And, and it actually, if you're designing a building and, and a facility and using 189 standards for the uh, high efficiency is, you know, you got to have a, a sustainability plan for the facility or there's existing facilities are starting to incorporating a sustainability plan and, and measuring the ventilation rates that you're bringing into the building to help um, that you're doing for the indoor air quality, but also balancing that out to make sure you're not overventilating uh, is a huge, huge issue. And, and many climates, including Colorado, is, is an issue of being able to bring in too much fresh air can cause issues. So, you know, those are the two biggest things of wanting to measure, we, we have to bring it in for indoor air quality and, and colds and everything else. And it's, it, it's a requirement, but also it's a balance of energy as well. So being able to measure that is the, is the only way we can truly really balance, achieve that balance. Uh, however, it's a problem that we currently have right now in the industry of measuring outdoor airflow. Our units are getting smaller or putting them on roofs or tent houses or whatever the case may be. Uh, and we try to measure outside airflow in these applications, and it's really not a fit. Um, and as you can see, a couple of pictures that we have here, louvers, dampers, we got a couple of uh, traditional flow stations that you that you can see in there. And, you know, and if you, ASHRAE 111 is a section many of you probably are aware of, but it basically has contractors commissioning agents use it quite a bit. But it talks about the issues and how to measure airflow, where to traverse it properly, and and all these applications that we see in these pictures are not great applications and really don't even meet ASHRAE standards. Uh, but, uh, and then we have the issue of it being an outside air, which is a whole other uh, issue, uh, especially when you get in more desert climates. But I'm sure in Colorado, we have 
pollutants in the air that get that can get into these sensor technologies and cause them to fail and need to have maintenance applied to them as well. So, but it's been a problem to measure outside air. It's always been an issue. Uh, well, the solution to the problem, uh, TrueFed, it's some KFC uh, came up with, and it's actually designed around uh, something already in ASHRAE standard, ASHRAE 111, uh, this uh, temperature ratio formula here that we have. That's actually that you'll see this formula throughout ASHRAE, a couple of different sections. Guideline 36 is another section that I'm very familiar with uh, being in the control side of things in California. But this standard has been around for a very, very long time. And it's just simple math, uh, but and it basically talks to tab contractors and other people that's trying to measure and you don't have enough proper ductwork to traverse. You know, using this temperature ratio formula is the solution that you have. So. I'm going to go to a schematic here of a, of a rooftop unit. This could be an air handler. It doesn't matter. It's just there for di diagramic purposes. Um, but what the ASHRAE formula, the 111 that we just showed, the mixed air equation formula, what, what it basically says is when you have an outside air return air and you have a delta, you know, 10 to 15 degrees air minimum, uh, and you have a, uh, the mixed air temperature sensor, you could run a that calculation. And running that calculation will tell you what percentage of that mixed air temperature is coming from outside and what percentage is coming from return air. And then you can apply that percentage uh, to the supply fan velocity, which, you know, supply fan velocity sensor or CFM, whatever you want to, uh, however you want to measure it there. Piezo rings, a huge, huge way we do that currently. But, um, and then that will tell you the percentage of the supply CFM that's coming from outside air source and what's coming from return air source. But the problem with that, that particular formula is, is two issues. Number one, you got to have the delta. You need that 10 to 15 degree delta between outside air and return air. It's not going to happen all the time. And the other thing is it's, that's really a snapshot, what it was really there for. And as those dampers start to move, the mixed air starting to change, you need that uh, temperatures need to settle. There's very, some latency going on there as well. So it's really not made to be an active monitoring solution for long-term purposes, just for snapshots to double check what you're getting at that particular time. Uh, so what KFC has done is, is we've come up with a, uh, a device called the nickelinometer. We didn't invent the nickelinometer, but uh, we found this device and we have applied it in this application, which is a tilt sensor. I'm gonna refer to it as a tilt sensor because the nickelinometer, if I say it three times, I might mess it up. But uh, so we apply a tilt sensor on a, on the damper section, as you can see, it's on the outside air section on this particular unit. Uh, and what we can do is uh, the system automatically in the field on each piece of equipment independently will run that ASHRAE formula at known damper position and build a characterization table based on the damper angle of what percentage of the supply flow is coming from that damper angle from the outside source and from the return air source. So at the end of the calibration period, the system does it automatically. So uh, the tab contractor or the automation contractor or or even possibly your your rep, uh, in this case Long, would, would go in there and they would trigger the, the uh, auto calibration learn mode. And the system will go through its checks, takes roughly two hours to complete. Uh, and when it's done, it, it's a complete table. It, it knows that whatever angle that damper is at, um, at what percentage of the supply flow is going to be coming through it at all times. Uh, there's some advanced applications we, we can get into on another time, but for this particular situation, very basic of how it works. So when the system's done, you can remove the temperature sensors. All it really needs is supply fan CFM, which we're getting with velocity sensors here, and then the tilt sensor. Um, but there's other applications we could talk about uh, leaving the temperature sensors in place because now we could run ASHRAE, uh, the 111 mixed air equation formula in the future. That way it can fact check itself and spit that out via back net to say, hey, I'm no longer accurate to my table, to my ASHRAE standard, something's wrong. Maybe uh, a damper got loose or linkage broke or whatever the case may be. So that's a huge advantage on a, from a fault detection standpoint, not including all the other fault detection that we can, that the system automatically puts out. So excessive outdoor air, which I know Colorado's adapted uh, that code standard to Title 24 as well. So uh, all those fault detections are built into this system, into this flow station system. Uh, and then leaving the actuator hooked up to it as well, when the system's done calibrating, it's just passing the, 
the control or the unit control or the BAS control, whatever is controlling the, the outdoor air or economizer actuator, uh, it's just passing that, that signal through. Uh, but if you leave it hooked up to the flow station, then in the future, uh, like hospitals and things like that, when they go to, you know, for JCO inspection, they need to calibrate the device. Uh, they could just hit a hit a button on the back net system on the BAS, and the system can run through its calibration process again and rebuild that characterization table all over again. Uh, you shouldn't have to do that a whole lot, considering that it's a fixed mechanical system. Uh, but you know, as damper seals start to leak over time, uh, again, actuators start to slip on the damper, things like that. Uh, you may want to uh, consider recalibrating. Uh, one of the biggest things that, that uh, this thing will do is the ability to be able to capture any kind of leakage that your damper assembly is getting or your curve. Or actually, maybe the, the unit went during the lift, the door got smashed. Uh, and we can pick that up because if the outside air is, you know, 100 degrees, 85 degrees, whatever, return air is 70, uh, and the mixed air is sitting at 74, where's that four degrees coming from? Uh, it's picking it up from the outside air source, even though the damper is closed. Uh, this system picks up on that. As a matter of fact, on, on almost every single new unit we install this on, we pick up a, a small percentage of leakage on every single uh, air handler that we do. And obviously, the more unitary equipment that this gets applied to, the more leakage happens, both, both on the return and the outside air. But the system, as you can see, it's a small amount of component. Uh, so this same system can be applied on a massive custom air handler all the way down to a fan cool unit. So we can actually measure unit ventilators now and fan cool units now not only accurate uh but uh, uh we're getting all three flows supply flow the return flow coming through the return air damper and the outside air flow coming through the outside air damper so all three flows with one flow station uh, is pretty unique and we're pretty excited about the product and and how it's being applied one other quick little thing which we'll get into the next slide as well is the maintenance uh, the cool thing about this system is is we're not putting any sensor in the outside air stream. So we're not, we're not worried about contaminants, dust, debris, smoke, anything like that, getting on sensor technology um, because, or on our sensor technology, because our tilt sensor is a, a sealed device. You could, okay. you could hold that thing in water and it'll still read angle at all times. Um, and we're also getting true damper angle as well. So if the actuator is laying on the ground, we're going to know it. Uh, traditional uh, economizers for fault detection, they require, they, they use a feedback signal coming from an actuator, uh, which is not really truly telling you where your damper is. Um, so those are some of the huge advantages that you have with the system, which we'll get into on the next slide. But uh, it, I think I have a little bit of time here. I want to briefly go through um, um, a, a VAV box, for example. If you have two registers on the, uh, uh, which is the two in, in, doing the two dampers and then a VAV crossflow sensor. So your CFM can change as long as those damper angles, we know uh, at those damper angles what those percentage of that flow is. So CFM, or, or I'm sorry, for a, a supply fan for a VAV, anything like that, the fan could go up and down. The system's going to be dead on accurate all the way through. So, and then so for just a quick overview of market comparison, uh, characterized airflow is the technology applied here. Uh, and we're just comparing it to a couple of different things that you see out in the, in, in currently in the industry, but suitable for any equipment uh, with a mixing box, hand cool units all the way up to custom air handlers, built up air handlers. We got examples of all of them. Uh, and then uh, we just talked about resilience to environment pollution. There's no reason to add a filter bank to this. There's no reason to add any extra ductwork because of, we're not affected by duct geometry and low velocity. We don't care about any of that. So no longer we have to worry about the, the days of having an extra outside air section just for minimum outside air are gone now. We don't even need that anymore with this particular system. As a matter of fact, you can just close that down or make it one big massive economizer uh, now. But And then accurate low velocity is massive issue with us. Uh, and then measurement performance diagnostics built into the system. So the system is a lot more than just three flow stations built into one. You're getting all your fault detections, all your Title 24 alerts, uh, anything like that from, from that you can imagine with the system. And then the installation and maintenance, the maintenance goes back to the environment, uh, the pollutants and everything. Uh, and then the installation cost, as you can see, it's a couple of temperature sensors, the velocity, which is typically done with piezo rings on the, on the fans. We have 
external ones if they don't have piezo ring. But that's a, typically a lot easier to install than building a, you know, putting in a big old massive flow station on the outside area of the louver, in between louvers and dampers, or whatever the case may be. So the installation cost is significantly less. So, and that's all I really had today. I want to push it back over to uh, uh, Jason here. I appreciate it. Hopefully, I didn't go too long. <laughs> but for thank you very much for your time. Thank you to everybody for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hopefully, you learned something. Uh, we're very excited about this product and would love to continue the conversation. So if you have any questions, please reach out to your long sales engineer. It's something that we can help out with uh, both through our equipment group and our controls group. So just know that uh, that's two different groups along that can be a resource for this. Um, next week, we'll hope you, you'll join us. We're going to be talking about the Daikin Hero platform, which is a cloud-based tool for energy modeling and diagnostics in VRV systems. So please join us for that. With that, thank you again, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you next Thursday.